strong at the plate tonight or what was difficult for your guys with that, that reliever for the final five innings or so? I mean, I can't speak for them. We didn't harp on it out there. We, you know, we'll, we always have a meeting on Wednesday and then we practice, so it'll come up. But I mean, from my point, it was it was pretty evident. It was just a bunch of spin and our guys kept chasing. Uh, he obviously landed enough, you know, for strikes too, but a ton of them were not in the zone. And, you know, our guys, for whatever reason, seem to be in a big hurry. But Again, I'm not up there, so some guys throw a breaking ball and it either looks like a fastball or it looks like it's going to be a strike and it ends up not being a strike. Can't speak for them, but it, it certainly was a repetitive mistake. It appeared to be guys being in a rush and then obviously chasing down the dirt. Drew, I thought it was all approach and nothing to do with the bats. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think what you're going to get out of the bats is you're going to get, you know, someone's not going to pop a cheap one or, you know, you maybe get a few more slower hit ground balls. Uh, you know, but it's going to downscale the score of the game. So, to me, maybe you could make the argument if there's aluminum in your hands, you, you lose six to five instead of what it was. But yeah, the approach was not very good. And overall, there was just decisions starting for me, you know, scattered throughout the game. Players and coaches, you know, probably would like to go back and, and redo it, but you don't get to do that. Do you think this venue with this many fans maybe played in the guys being rushed? I don't think so. I mean, it was a little quirky when we showed up. I mean, uh, everybody kind of went in a different spot, and we ended up not being able to take BP on the field. So other than, you know, kind of not having a regular pregame or, or what the pregame was mapped out to be, uh, I think the guys were excited for something kind of different, you know, um, as far as the wood bat goes. And then we played in front of it almost – an exact same type of situation in Chattanooga in the fall and then here in the spring. So I don't think, I think, you know, you give credit to Tennessee Tech for how they played. And, then, you know, our guys, I'm not a big fan of one of those nights is, is a phrase I think he's throw out the window. I, I wouldn't go that far. Um, but, you know, a, a freshman doesn't know to let that ball go through so the shortstop can, you know, feel, it, uh, feel the ball and throw the guy out. And then uh, we had another mistake in the inning where they scored two that, and if you go back, you would you would definitely redo uh, the pitch there that you throw. But um, I, I wouldn't say anything quirky like that. We got beat regardless of where we were playing or what bats we were using. Having come from behind late like that, I don't know, it may have been a while since y'all do that. Did that, that maybe leave some of the pressure? I think, you, you know, I mean, people, the fans are hooting and hollering, and the guys in the dugout are yelling, and, and it's kind of a different setting here. Um, a little taste of what it's like to be in pro ball. The, the park is more spread out. You, you don't hear things quite quite as accurately or as quite quite as well. Um, but yeah, I, I would just say the thing we'd go back in time and do is, you know, or the second guy of the ninth inning there, you take a strike, uh, which that, that's probably on more frustration stemming for me not relaying that or us not relaying it to him or him not doing it. So again, we, we haven't gone over any of the fine points of the game, but I think we just need to be a little more patient if we're down one late in the game, but but otherwise I, I think, you know, the game from the first inning on, if you're watching, you know with a wood bat, it's going to be a little tighter. It's, you, you know, it's going to be a, a lot less room for air. Yeah, I think you focus on the one loss instead of the 23 wins, if you ask me. I'm a coach, I'm not a player, but uh, when I was playing, I dang sure didn't like to, to lose. Um, so if this doesn't wake you up out of bed tomorrow morning, uh, probably not with a good feeling or a good taste, but wake you up wanting to play some baseball, uh, I don't know what will. You know, it's uh, it's overused, but Coach Heupel's group loses a game. They got to sleep on that thing for a week. Obviously, you get back to preparation, but we've got a game right around the corner against a really good SEC team. That's, I don't know how they did tonight, but they're, they're obviously hitting their stride. How do you keep those hitting approach, all that stuff? How do you keep it as an, an aberration, not the norm moving forward? Uh, I think with anything, you don't want to repeat mistakes. And so that's what I think I talked about with John yesterday on the, on the radio was, um, you know, if you're trying to, like, determine when you peak as a player or as a team, that it's not really going to work out because the results, I mean, I don't know what our best score was early in the year, maybe against Iona. I think we scored 29 or 30. We should have just called it a year right then if you're going to go off the scoreboard. So it's not about peaking or, or finding the best results. It's about finding things that you need to improve upon and make adjustments so you don't repeat mistakes. And there's going to be some mistakes that are repeated, but the ones you have control over with your effort and, and making subtle adjustments, uh, they got to stop as you get deeper into the year. And then if you 
you get into May and June, you got a whole Rolodex of things that you know you're good at, and then things you improved at or, or kind of corrected, and now you're a really dangerous team at the right time of year. You like are. Tony, it's, a, it's a kind of a cliche, but you know sometimes people say some people say that when you lose, it's a little bit sharp or a little bit easier to learn from the and focus on it. Is that you believe in that? I, I would. Uh, you know, we got a 30-minute bus trip back, and not one minute will I be thinking I'm glad we lost. So I can start with that. But I will say, I've several times when we've met with the guys, kind of said, I get it, you guys are, you know, happy with the result, but we didn't do this right, or the, you know. So it's it's hard to point out mistakes or get their attention, and you're certainly not going to win a game and then go out in right field and, and hoot and holler and be like, you know, you, know, you guys are crazy. I don't know what coach. You're not going to go Bob Knight on him, losing to Purdue uh, after a win. Thanks, Coach. Thanks.